Varun Dutti Agarwal from Grade 3C and today I will present the Tandra Bayum, The Winter Wonderland. Tandra comes from the Finnish word Tenturia, which, uh, which means treeless plain. About one-fifth of Earth's land surface is Tundra. Tundra acts like an air conditioner for our planet, cooling the warm winds from the tropics which moves towards the north and south pole. Tundra is a large carbon sink as it takes more carbon than it releases. Because of the cold weather, the decomposition of plants and animal, dead plants and animals take a long time. Let me tell you a few characteristics of Tundra. It is an extremely cold place. It has low biotic diversity. There is a simple vegetation structure. There is a limitation of drainage and short period of growth and reproduction. There are three types of Tundra. The Arctic Tundra, Alpine Tundra and the Antarctic Tundra. I have made my model on the Arctic Tundra. The two main seasons in this region are winter and summer. Let me tell you about the climate over there. As the earth is tilted on its axis, the north and south pole are furthest from the sun. That's why the tundra is very cold with long nights and winters. Let me tell you about the temperature. The winters are extremely cold with temperatures typically below minus 34 degrees Celsius. The summers last for only two months and they are very also very cold, only lasting only up to 16 degrees Celsius which is also known as a sweater weather in Hyderabad. Let me tell you about the soil profile. Because of the, because of the climate, the soil has three layers. The topmost layer is called the active layer. This layer thaws in the summer and freezes in the winter. Below the active layer is the permafrost. This, surface, this layer is permanently frozen and it will not melt even in the summer. Talic is a layer below the permafrost which is, which is unfrozen. Because of the permafrost, the, the plant's roots can't grow too deep and that's why when we look at the tundra, there are small plants like cushion plants, grass, mosses, lichens, shrubs, etc. These, these, these plants start, start off the food chain. The producers like lichens are eaten by the, are eaten by the herbivores like, like caribou. They are eaten by the carnivores like foxes. They are eaten by the omnivores like bears and on the top of the pyramid is man. Man hunts wolves and bears for food and fur. Let me tell you about human life. People who live over here are called Inuits. They are mainly non-vegetarian as it is very difficult to grow vegetables over here. They 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 live in a they live in an igloo for protection from the harsh winter months. And now, I know you must be wondering why did I choose this biome as my model? Well, these regions cool down the planet and with increased global warming due to pollution, the ability to do so is reducing. Increased global warming also rises the sea levels. And drilling for oil over here pollutes one of the most cleanest places on our planet and disrupts this fertile biome. And did you know there are only 20,000 polar bears left in the world? Yes, and the starving polar bear is one of them. Because of global warming, the tundra animals are finding it very difficult to find the natural food. They either starve or come towards human settlements where they may be killed. So, please, reduce pollution, slow down global warming for the polar bears and...
my friends